Next section now, portfolio return measurement. As an investor, you need to measure portfolio returns. A very basic concept when we measure returns is that of a holding period return. Let's say that you buy a stock for $50 and one quarter later or one period later, the stock has gone up to 55 plus at the end of the period you get a five dollar dividend so what is your holding period return for this one quarter or three month period you made an investment of 50 that investment has now essentially turned into dollar 60 between 55 for the stock and five dollars dividend so you made an extra $10 on your $50 investment. So your holding period return is 10 divided by 50, which is 20%. In terms of portfolio return measurement tools, there are two techniques that are used to calculate return. One is called the money weighted return and the other is called a time weighted return and we need to understand both these methods let us first talk about the money weighted rate of return the most important point to remember related to money weighted rate of return is that money weighted rate of return is effectively the IRR of the investment so we need to determine the cash flows which typically would involve uh, investment in the beginning and then hopefully receiving money in the future so all we need to do is input the cash flows into our calculator and compute the irr consider a very simple scenario where at time zero you buy a stock for 20 dollars so that is your investment your initial cash outflow at time zero then is minus 20. at time period one let's say this is one year later you purchase a second share so that is a cash outflow and a dividend of 50 cents is received so the net cash outflow is 22. At the end of period two, you receive a dollar. This means that you are getting a 50 cents dividend on each share. So that's the plus one. And you are receiving $47 from selling the two shares. So overall, you are getting 48 at the end of period two. So what is the IRR? What you do is, in your financial calculator, enter cash flow 0 is minus 20, cash flow 1 is minus 22, and cash flow 2 is plus 48, and compute the IRR. What you should get is an IRR of 9.39%. Now let's look at the time-weighted rate of return. The time-weighted rate of return measures the compound rate of growth of $1 initially invested in the portfolio over a stated measurement period. Let's take the same example where we invest $20 and then we purchase a second share, we get a dividend at the end of year one and then we sell at the end of the second year. So the exact same cash flow but when we calculate the time weighted rate of return it will be a little different to compute the time weighted rate of return we need to see what happens to a dollar which is invested at time zero so notice that the investment at time zero is twenty dollars at the end of the first year the stock has gone up to twenty two point five plus there is a dividend of 0 0.50. This means that we have received a return of 15%. So 20 essentially becomes 23. So the return is 15%. A dollar invested over here has now effectively become 
a dollar point one five at the end of one period then for the second period we again need to determine the return a stock that was purchased at the beginning of the second period for 2250 became worth 2350 at the end of the second period and there was a dividend of 50 cents which means that uh, investment of 22.50 at the beginning of the period essentially gave us 24 at the end of the period this amounts to a 6.67 percent return and the 1.15 that we have at the end of period one can then be multiplied by 1.067 and that will tell us how much this initial one dollar has become at the end of period two and the number we will get is 1.2267 but we need to say what the growth rate has been on average each year for that we need to compute the geometric mean and we do that by multiplying 1.15 which is this number by 1.067 and then raised to the power of 1 over 2 2 because we have two periods and we get 1.1075 this means that each period on average the rate or return is 0 0.1075 which is the same as 10.75 percent so the time weighted return is 10.75 percent let us look at a few subtleties related to the time weighted return the first one is how to deal with inflows and outflows during the year in the example i just showed you the inflows and outflows were happening at the end of the year let's say that we have inflows and outflows at the end of every quarter in a year so this is one year and each point over here represents the end of a quarter what we need to do is compute the return for every single period so first quarter the return let's say is 10% in the second period the return might be five percent then let's say it is minus ten percent and finally plus twenty percent so what we do is for each sub period within a year we compute the returns and then we figure out what happens to a dollar invested at the start of the period what is the overall return and the calculation is straightforward we multiply this by 1.1 because if there is a 10 percent return in the first quarter then the dollar becomes equal to dollar times 1.1 which is 1.1 and then we multiply by 1.05 because there is a five percent return and then multiplied by 0 0.9 because we have a 10 percent decline so whatever value we have at the end of year two will go down by 10 percent and we express that by multiplying by 0.9 and then finally the the fourth quarter is good up by 20 percent so we multiply by 1.2 and this should give us 1.2474 or effectively the return over the year was 24.74 percent the other tricky item is dealing with negative numbers and we've already done that over here notice if the return is negative then we simply multiply by one minus that number so one minus 0.1 is 0.9 what you are not supposed to do is simply multiply the direct return numbers you have to multiply one plus r1 into one plus r2 where r1 r2 r3 and r4 are the returns for each sub period and if a return is negative then this expression will simply be less than one 
So let's look at the overall methodology now for calculating the time weighted rate of return. We have a two year period where cash inflows and outflows are happening at the end of every quarter. And in a two year period, we have eight quarters. And let's say that these top three items are done for you which is price the portfolio immediately prior to any significant additions or withdrawal of funds. We are saying that all these significant additions and withdrawals are happening at the end of every period. Break the overall evaluation into sub periods based on the dates of cash inflows and outflows. So we have defined these as uh, sub periods. Calculate the holding period return on the portfolio for each sub period and that has been done so we have calculated the returns for each sub period then we are supposed to link or compound holding period returns to obtain an annual rate of return for the year so if you take year one to come up with the number for year one we simply multiply 1.0.95 by times 1.15 times 0 0.9 and this gives us for year one a dollar invested at the start of the year becomes equal to 1.0816 and then for the second year, we multiply 0.8 by 1.3 and so on. And we have 1.248 for the second year. If there is a 0% return, then we simply multiply by 1. So a dollar invested at the start will become 1.0816 times 1.248 at the end of year 2. To figure out the average per year, we have to take the geometric mean of the numbers for the two years. So you multiply them and then raise to the power of 1 over 2 because we have two years and we get 1.1618 and the rate then is 16.18. So the time weighted rate of return in this example is 16.18%. Let us now briefly summarize the differences and similarities between money weighted rate of return versus time weighted rate of return. And this is a summary of what we've talked about. Money weighted rate of return is simply the IRR, whereas time weighted rate of return is the compound rate of growth of $1 initially invested in the portfolio over a stated measurement period. Both these numbers, however, are expressed on an annual basis. The money weighted rate of return depends on the timing and amount of cash flows. And you will understand this better when you work through practice problems. But clearly, if you are investing a lot of money just before a period where there is a tremendous amount of growth, then that is good for the money weighted rate of return. The time weighted rate of return, however, does not depend on the timing and amount of cash flows. So which method is better? The answer is that it depends. Let's say that you are evaluating a portfolio manager who has no control over when he receives funds to invest. If the portfolio manager does not have control over when to invest funds, then the time weighted return is the appropriate measure because we should not penalize or reward the investment manager based on the timing of cash flow. So in this particular scenario, it would be appropriate to use the time weighted rate of return and not the money weighted rate of return. On the other hand, if you have a situation where the investment manager does have control over the timing and amount of investment, then it makes sense to use the money weighted rate of return. Let us take a look at this practice question now and I want you to try this before you watch the video. 
So for the money weighted return, you enter the cash flows as follows. Cash flow zero is minus 50 because that's your initial investment. At the end of period one, you spend 60 more dollars on a share, but you get a dividend of three. So net cash flow is 57. And at the end of year two, you sell the shares for a total of 150 plus you get six dollars dividend so the total cash flow is 156 compute irr and you should get 28.6 that is a percent for time weighted return you calculate the return for each period at the beginning of the period you invested 50 dollars and that particular share was worth 60 plus there was a dividend of three that means you had a return of 26% or your $1 here at time zero became 1.26 at the end of the period. For the second period, the return was 30%. So the dollar here became 1.3 at the end. If you think of the dollar from the start of the year, that becomes 1.26 into 1.3. To compute the time weighted return, we need to find the geometric mean of these two numbers. So we multiply them and raise to the power of 1 over 2 because we have two periods and we get 1.2798. This means that the return is 27.98%.